it was unexpected. I felt so scared. I thought the end of the war was coming. I could see all the lights in the street were shaking from the side to side and hear the booms and the crashes at the houses around me began to collapse and people were running out. Pensé mil cosas, que el techo se me venía encima y que quizás nunca más podía ver a mi hijo. Ecuador suffered a 7.8 earthquake. Some of the country is unscathed, but there are parts of it that are absolutely level. Uh, over 500 people were killed. There are tens of thousands of people without a place to live. A uh, house just like this behind me, uh, parts of it is still standing, but there's no way you can live in it. And there's still aftershocks, and buildings are still crumbling. People are still getting hurt. Samaritan's Purse, we responded quickly. We have a field hospital that is already up and running. Uh, there's a lot of need. We've come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, in the emergency field hospital, we have uh, one operating room and 32 beds. Uh, behind me, uh, the, the, the first tent right here is our triage tent. This is where they're primarily assessed. Then the larger tent behind it is the emergency room, and I think that we have about 13 or 15 beds in the emergency room. Then in the other tents, we have a male ward and a female ward. Uh, we've got staff living quarters. Uh, we have a tent where our pharmacy is. We have a tent where the operating room is. Uh, we've got generators. All of this is self-contained, but everything that we have come here with came on the DC-8. So this is Samaritan's first, first field hospital. Samaritan's first has had hospitals in other countries before, but this is its maiden voyage, the first time it's uh, been put up in the field. And uh, this is kind of the opportunity to test it out and uh, to be able to help the Ecuadorian people. This hospital is a, is a godsend. I mean, I know it's a lot of guys have been working on it for quite a while, and this was a fitting situation to finally deploy it. It is mind-blowing what they've done here in such a short period of time. Everything that you see behind me in the emergency field hospital, we loaded it onto our DC-8 in Greensboro, North Carolina, and uh, the plane is called a combi. The front two-thirds are for storage, and the back one-third is for passengers. That DC-8 has also a 7,000-mile range on it. We can go anywhere in the world with it. Uh, we landed here, our plane was offloaded, and uh, it holds a lot of stuff. I mean, it can carry about 40 tons worth of cargo. If we didn't have that DC-8, we would never be able to respond uh, this quickly and with this kind of reach and with all of the people and all of the stuff uh, that we need to set an operation like this up. The day of the earthquake, Maria was playing with her cousins um, and some siblings at the park when you know, the earthquake began. She actually ran from that site and a small wall had fallen on her leg. She unfortunately sustained some fractures and of course she did need surgery. Early this morning we did surgery. She's doing great. Post-operatively she looks great. Vital signs have been stable. She's gonna need a ventilator. So her daughter's out of surgery. She's okay. And then unfortunately mom at the same time came in sick with bilateral pneumonia. She's having a seizure right now. So. Can we just get the O2? But yeah, it's just, it's kind of, this family, unfortunately, really needs a lot of prayer. It's crushing. This is a horrible crisis. A lot of people have lost a lot of their livelihood, their lives, their loved ones. We're always looking for more, you know, prayer, support. We can never, we can never ask that enough. Uh, you know, that's why we're all here. There's also a little boy named Ishmael in the ward, and Ishmael was burned. I think a pot of hot water came off the stove during the shaking, and he's burned down his backside and down his legs. And oh, I, and he actually he reminds me of my grandson. And you see him come in, and uh, you know they're broken. The, every one of those people are very important. <laughs> We can only do this, we can only come to places like this because of partners like you that stand behind us. So thank you for, for helping us. We need your prayers. The people of this nation need your prayers. So thank you. Remember Ecuador.